is expected to be joining us from Addis Ababa via telephone link up, but due to circumstances beyond our control, we have not been able to connect with him. We'll bring him later whenever he can join us. In the meantime, of course, uh, I have the honor and the privilege of introducing to you Emira Woods, an associate fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies here in Washington, and Ni Akwete, executive director at the African Immigrant Caucus. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have to say, of course, as, often, as I often say, that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to be able to host you again on Straight Talk Africa. The honor is ours, really. It's, an, it's a joy to be with Straight Talk Africa and to, uh, to consistently stand with you to make sure that the talk is straight and clear and that all voices are heard regarding Africa policy. You're most welcome, Emila, because uh, I remember with nostalgia when, of course, you joined us to celebrate the 10 years of the program. And guess what? We are now 15. Amazing, yeah, how time goes. Well, Thank we congratulate you. you. Thank Continue you so much. To the whole team. What about you, Dean? Well, let me say it. happy 2016, and I echo everything that Amira said, and, and thanks for having us. You're most welcome. And, of course, you've been watching uh, what's going on on the African continent. Uh, we had a summit which ended up on Sunday. Um, how did you see it? It was supposed to be focusing, focusing on human rights and specifically focusing on women's human rights. Why should there be human rights and women's human rights? I thought it would just be human rights. Well, without a doubt, women hold up half the sky, as they say. Yeah? So you cannot talk about human rights without talking about women's rights. And also, you cannot talk about women's rights and feminism without talking about human rights, because um, expanding rights for all, those inalienable rights, um, actually benefits the entire society, whether it's children or people who are marginalized groups, uh, LGBTI groups, uh, all um, who have been long stigmatized are included when we talk about human rights. Huh? It's, it's, it's a social justice call that all must really uphold throughout the continent. So I'm glad it was spotlighted, but uh, unfortunately it was sidelined, to be quite frank. Um, uh, yet again, uh, sidelined by developments on the continent, sidelined by issues of conflict, uh, by issues of, of uh, the need to put attention to peace and to, to human security matters. Interesting. What about you, Ni? Uh, overshadowed by political... Well, you know, I, 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 I'm a little inclined to be slightly contrarian. Because uh, what overshadowed it? A string of um, uh, security crisis. Um, Burundi boiling, South Sudan. Um, we didn't even ma much mention, I mean, at least the official communiques didn't mention um, what happened with um, Somalia and the killing of the Kenyans. There are so many security crisis points on the continent. And the reason, it seems to me, it's how it's framed. I, I think Addis can do a better job. Because I bet you, if you scratch below the surface, most of, a lot of the victims of those crises are women and children. So, and of course, which is the, what is the very first human right of anybody? It's life. And therefore, when you have crises like this, and you want to deal with them quickly. You don't want Burundi to go over the edge. You want to bring South Sudan closer to a solution. You want to deal with all these others. I, if, if I were in Addis, I would be couching it as, yes, um, you know, we may not mention women a lot, but in fact, we are hard trying to protect uh, everybody's human rights. And if I might, I think the reason, I mean, your first question to Emira is great. Why are we talking about women's rights and human rights? Aren't they the same? They are the same, but the history of the world in any country, in this country, across our continent, is that there hasn't been equality. So when you are now trying to bring equality, you have to focus on certain segments, but it covers everybody. So basically, you, you, you can't really talk about uh, human rights unless you talk about the fundamentals, which are probably peace and stability. Without a doubt, yeah? it yes. is, it's, it's assuring that the rights for all to have that basic measure of human decency, to, to be able to live their lives freely with, with, with dignity, uh, with assurance that they won't be uh, killed in their own homes, you know, that they won't be pushed from their homes, mm -hmm. uh, as so many are, either as refugees or as migrants. Huh? And, and so it is that basic right of, of, uh, of life. 
uh, then it's, it's liberty. It's the pursuit of happiness. It mm. is those inalienable rights that are enshrined in whether it's the UN declaration or in constitutions around the world uh, that, mm. that must be protected. And so, so, so the, the African Union carving out a space you know, for this meeting, the 26th session, to focus on these issues was timely. Um, I think it is unfortunate that there aren't, you know, sort of a set um, a program of action mm. as was intended coming out of the session to, to actually address these issues. Because in a fundamental way, I think Nia and I agree that when you pay attention to human rights and human dignity, you actually avert some of the very crises we see unfolding before us. You know, let's remember the, the, the conflicts, whether it's, it's Somalia, you mm -hmm. know, started um, with people demanding self-determination. Somalis demanding an opportunity to freely choose their leaders and hold those leaders accountable. Those rights of political participation, those rights of democracy are, are really enshrined in, in all human rights um, um, protocols and conventions. And, and it is those rights being undermined that often lead to the conflict. It's very interesting, Amira, that uh, you mentioned a very important uh, uh, word, actually, and that is accountability. How do you, for example, respond to some people who say that even in a lot of African countries where there might not be war, there is a lot of evidence on the ground, in fact, that there is no peace? Because they argue that peace is not merely, for example, the absence of war, the absence of people with arms fighting one another, but rather it is the presence of social justice, accountability, and reconciliation. Do you agree with us? Ah, without a doubt. You see that when those basic fundamentals are overlooked or undermined, the right of people to organize, you know, in opposition groups, the right of people to freely choose their governments. You see country after country uh, where presidents are essentially enshrining themselves in office, changing constitutions to extend their terms. You know, and I, and I think we have to say it's quite uh, alarming when you see the, the, the uh, African Union being handed from President Mugabe to President Debbie of Chad, who himself has a deplorable record in these areas mm -hmm. of, uh, of human rights and, and of respect for the rule of law. I think what we have to say is that um, the African Union must look to its own principles. You know, there, there are these uh, peer review mechanisms that the African Union set up uh, when they established, they shifted from the Organization of African Union to, um, to the African Union with a deliberate effort to open up the democratic space, to allow in civil society, to allow in uh, women's groups, opposition groups, to create a pan-African parliament. All of these instruments to democratize the continent very much to be applauded. Uh, but, but essentially, at times, have, have been, uh, you know, sort of stripped of their, of their power, of their voice to determine the future. So I think we've got to go back to those fundamentals on the continent, to, to bring measures of accountability, to create opportunities where people are, are once again able to exercise their basic um, rights to human dignity. Inalienable rights. Inalienable In rights. Fact, birth rights, really. Without a doubt, it's, it's those basics of food, of, of, of health, of education, of housing, you know, that many in the liberation days fought for, uh, you know, fought the end of colonialism because of a demand for those rights to be upheld. And now you see decades later, those, those rights are uh, unfortunately pushed aside too often. Me, from your experience, uh, does the African Union really, as it is set up, uh, does it have the mandate, for example? Does it have the power, really, given that it has no sovereign powers? That is an institution, in fact, uh, that is perhaps uh, a reflection of the total sum of most member countries which happen to be undemocratic? I think um, you actually uh, um, read my mind. I think the Africa Union has a role, and it has a lot of influence, but nowhere everything that is needed. This is actually, I think, teamwork. I think one of the things that we need to encourage is civil society within different countries. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we'll get to Burundi. One of the issues is if you are going to send Africa Union troops 
into a country that doesn't agree you have a problem. The African Union doesn't have its own troops. It has to ask for them. And they are going to a hostile territory. And so what they can do from Addis, even if all of them behave perfectly, is, is limited. There has to be civil society movements on the ground, the voters in every country. The African Union does have a role. But of course, they are human, they don't, they don't behave perfectly. They are actually a club of presidents, a club of heads of state. They look out for each other, they use excuses. Some of the people who are against the troops into Burundi are thinking, well, if I vote for them to go into Burundi next, it might be me. So they cover themselves. So I do think uh, the African Union is important, it's necessary, it has a role, but the power that it has is not, we, we shouldn't look to them to do everything. We need to actually be working with civil society groups all across the continent in every country to generate power and movements from the bottom up because they, uh, pe people on the ground have the power to throw out leaders. It will be a little dicey for our, the African Union to say to a head of state, you've been there 30 years, we are coming to throw you out. So it can actually talk the talk but can't actually quite walk the talk. That, that's true. And in fact, I have to give them a little credit. You know, since they became the Africa Union, they have actually said they took one step. I think we need the second. But the first good step was if you come to power by unconstitutional means, you are not welcome. And that has dampened the, the temptation for leaders to, to take over by military coups. It has dampened that. But they also need to um, make sure that those who are sitting tight get off the, the, the uh, seat of power.